Well, Ivor, we finally get to check out the finished product here on the south end of Bluebill Pond on a gorgeous March 14th late afternoon. What have we got here? Well, we, we only cut the low area during the frozen ground conditions because we have other opportunities to cut the high ground. And uh, I don't think we need to do it quite yet anyway. So let's go down our checklist. Um, ribbon trees have been saved, check. Ribboned trees, have they been scarred by the logging activity? No. No. No, check. Coarse woody debris left on the ground for biological, ecological purposes, check. Soil rutting, no, check. Tops of the saved trees damaged, no, check. Diversity of species left, yellow birch, black ash, white pine, red maple, check. Big snags left for the same reason as coarse woody debris, check. Legacy, tre legacy trees left, that's a definite yes, check. Overall appearance, quite good. Excellent in fact, check. So we set out to cut the poorest, cut a few of the big ones, leave quite a few of the big ones, but clearly leave quality for the future and to try to accelerate growth on the black ash, which might have a 25 year window of life before the emerald ash borer gets here. So one more generation of, of black ash products, check. We did real well, Ivor. You know what's really fun, Ivor? Is today at the planer mill in Big Fork, we got to see pine of the quality that would come out of a spectacular tree like that. So even though we didn't take that one, we take some now and then, and those are big trees and they add up. Really, are you gonna listen to me or not? I guess you're just overjoyed. So, other than the um, pruning, that will happen now that we've got the crop trees established, and then the uh, white pine underplanting that's gonna happen out on the point, out there where we cut it harder to create the opening that we need uh, and then the regeneration the natural regeneration that's going to happen very rapidly here in the hardwood site I'd call it a wrap good job buddy well since we just saw a beautiful red pine tree standing that we left as a legacy tree um, it might be fun to look at the type of lumber that comes from a tree like that at the planer mill in Big Fork. There's the Big Fork water tower. Here's the inside of the planer mill. Uh, but this lumber has been sawn and then stickered, which means those sticks placed in between the rows for drying purposes. We use a real special stick to prevent uh, a shadow line between the stick and the surface of the lumber. The lumber has been uh, very carefully prepared prior to and after the kiln drying. It's dried to about 9% moisture. We use a lot of sticks and we keep them vertically aligned so that the lumber stays really flat. That's, that's important to our customers and for our own millwork plant. The planer operator is also controlling the infeed to the planer. Uh, there's the lumber on the tilt hoist. And you'll see in a minute that when he lets down one row at a time, the sticks in between the rows fall separately. There's Ivor. He likes the planer mill almost as much as the forest. There's a little bit of food scattered around the planer mill. There go the sticks down onto a belt and are picked up by one of the guys and placed into the racks to be reused. Here's the lumber going into the planer. 
This is random width lumber, which is typical of a factory grade. Uh, factory meaning it's going to be heading off to a uh, customer, of our, customer of ours to be used in their factory, and they rip it into a whole bunch of different widths, and uh, they prefer it to come random widths rather than sorted to width. <laughs> There's a mix of grades coming through right now, but it's the it's the uh, highest uh, grades or portion of the grade mix. There's a nice clear board that we'll see go through the process now. It goes down one belt and comes back another so that the even end is on the greater trimmer operator's side so he doesn't have to fight with it. He's marking the grades and, and doing some trimming. There's that nice clear board. A peek inside of the trimming area. The trim saws are a little bit up above and they drop down on command by the operator when needed to either trim an end or two ends or to cut a piece in half to separate it into two different grades. And now the lumber gets piled. The guys are reading the grade marks and putting it into the appropriate pile. This is the highest of the high, high grades. C and better. Basically clear with just a few small knots. This is molding grade, which is the next step down, but still has a high percentage of clear, not free lumber in it. And this is the medium grade of shop, which has to have at least 50% clear. So, hope you enjoyed it.